Okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning to all the students who've joined in online and also those of you who have, will be tuning in later to the e-learning course. I hope uh, all of you are doing well. Um, we have been, uh, we've started on, uh, I, rather we're ending on one of the uh, elements of marriage. We were doing the elements of a good marriage over the last couple of weeks. We started off with uh, uh, communication, we went into uh, understanding how it is to be a team, how to resolve conflicts. Uh, we spoke about home management, sex and sexuality. We spoke about how to establish boundaries. Um, so today we we'll look at the last part of it, which is uh, spiritual growth and spiritual nourishment. As I had mentioned, we're not going um, through the entire book in a, uh, in a chronological order. Uh, we, we're just moving it here and there, but we will be covering all the chapters. So today, uh, in both our lessons today, we'll be covering chapter 16 as well as chapter 17. Okay, chapter 16 versus chapter 17. So if any of you are following through the book, um, you can uh, actually open it there uh, since we'll be also looking at a couple of scriptures as well. Okay, so one of the uh, important parts of uh, having a Christian family is uh, a large part of it is building each other up spiritually. It is uh, coming together as a family uh, in in growing spiritually as well as uh, learning together of God's word and learning together of of who God is, experiencing God together as a family. So uh, in our first chapter on sixteen, chapter sixteen. We're going to be looking at um, uh, some part of the family family altar or family prayer. And we're also going to be um, uh, learning and focusing on how do we pray for members of the family? What can we pray for? Um, how do we pray for um, our spouses, our children? How do we pray for uh, uh, people who maybe family members who've moved away from the Lord? How do we pray for, for extended family? So this is what we'll be looking at in our first hour, second hour. We'll look at uh, uh, how do we serve as, as families of, uh, of God? How do we serve God in a different aspect? So we, we're going to begin with chapter 16. Um, and uh, so before we get started, um, let's just quickly look at what the significance is of maintaining a family altar what what do we see is the uh, is the is the importance or what do we see as uh, let's say highlights of why a family altar uh, is uh, should be there so in the family um, god definitely has brought about the husband and the wife together um, uh, to 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 be leaders in spiritual growth of the children so part of this uh, involves uh, teaching them um, how to pray, teaching them uh, how to pray, teaching them from the Word of God, uh, building them up in the uh, in the uh, in in knowing and and encountering the the Holy Spirit, and also a part of it is also helping them to grow in a in a church community as well. That's what we'll be going to look at the at the next hour. So. When you are bringing up the family or uh, in faith, it definitely requires a couple of things. One is to do it on a regular, consistent basis. And the other is to, to be very focused and very intentional about bringing the family together to um, uh, together to for a family altar or um, for anything that brings about that kind of nourishment. So uh, as a parent, it should be a deep desire within you to really bring the other members in a personal relationship with God. So even as, as a parent, you're doing that, you're also taking the time to go back uh, in prayer, your individual prayer, your time with God, and then also praying for your family that they may come together in prayer. So these, th there are two things that we are going to be looking at in this chapter. It is about family prayer as well as how can we pray for, um, uh, how can we pray for the family. So uh, 
what is what is the spiritual significance of of a family altar so one of the things is when when the whole family comes together when you're honoring the family uh, time uh, family prayer time or spiritual growth what you're doing is you're also inviting the glory of god in your home you're bringing the glory of god to your to to your place to within the members of your family so that god's glory can be manifested through you all also uh, the more of the glory of god that is present in a home um the 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 less habitable it is for the powers of darkness so the the more of god that's there the more of an understanding of god the knowledge of god the seeking of god a time of worship a time of coming together uh, which definitely brings the glory of god the less uh, place or the less habitable you're making it for any kind of the powers of of darkness and so as as matthew says uh, you know when two or three are gathered in his name he is present in their midst so it's with that principle that we speak of that the more of god's glory the the less of the work of the work of the enemy can be manifest or, or there is a whole lot more of authority and power that the family can exercise in order to um, bring about Uh, god's rule and god's reign in in the in the home so um, and so that's the spiritual significance uh, f- significance of it so let's look at um, uh, the family altar and what does it mean so basically the family altar or time of family prayer just means when when all of you are gathered together for a time of uh, prayer for a time of reading god's word and for a time of of worship and ministering to one another of speaking of god's goodness so th- that's what we're looking at family prayer it's a, it's a time when everyone comes together with the purpose of focusing on god focusing on what um uh, on on receiving from god on hearing from god so Uh, what are some of the practical aspects that we can look at now it can be uh, it can i i know maybe that there may be certain times of the day that may be uh, most useful for you so you're you're looking at a time of the day which is convenient for everybody and ensuring that you're keeping it uh, as regular as possible and coming together uh, as regularly as possible so it depends also on the on the ages of the children that you you may be having for very very young children it's uh, it's probably keeping it very very flexible and something that they are also actually can be involved in and can uh, participate maybe with the children who are uh, older you make it relevant to to them in in some of the aspects of the disciplines that you uh, employ while you are having a family prayer so uh, there isn't a specific can you all hear me am i audible yeah okay so it's it's always good to um read from scripture to to um you know maybe it's it's a passage or probably it's some kind of a devotional that you can you can use uh, where there there can be a discussion and uh, uh following that there can be some conversation and maybe ans- and and looking at how certain questions can be answered so basically what you're looking is to en- to ensure that there is participation from everyone it 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 should be it should be flexible and not really be extremely ritualistic uh, you know so to so the the idea is for people to grow uh, not just for the sake of a family prayer and and of course uh, you also ensuring that there is time to pray for each member of the family for something that's collective maybe in the home something that's there um, uh, that's uh, that on the family's mind of uh, praying for the church praying for the for the city for the nation any specific thing that uh, you can do so coming together in prayer is absolutely uh, important um now it's also uh, uh, important to understand let's say in a home where there may be one or two members who haven't yet uh, 
made a commitment or, or uh, received their salvation, it's always nice to invite them to join in, uh, in, in your prayer time, uh, making it, you know, uh, while, while even praying to keeping it very meaningful and, and welcoming rather than, uh, you know, scaring somebody away. So it's, it's good to invite people um, uh, who have not received the Lord uh, for, for, this, for this time of prayer. Okay. Uh, the next thing that we will also look into is um, uh, understanding how do we pray for the family? W what should we do? Or in other words, as, as it's written here, it's standing in the gap. It's, it's being there uh, in between uh, the person who you're praying for and you know seeking out and interceding for them on their behalf. And that's what standing in the gap gap means. Okay. Um, if if you look at uh, Luke chapter 22 verses 31 and 32, we see how uh, the Lord Jesus is telling Peter how he's prayed for him so that his faith does not fail. Right. So uh, it, it's something that is that is that is biblical, biblical. So that we we pray for people, especially within uh, um, our homes. So what do we pray for? We can pray for um, uh, now. We do understand that God has a certain destiny for each person. There is a certain purpose that God has called each person to fulfill. So that's probably the first thing that we can pray for, that, that the plan and the purposes of God in the lives of your family members, be it your spouse, your children, or other members of your family, that they uh, reach their destiny. They may fulfill whatever God has purposed in their lives. Okay, we also pray, uh, we, we would also pray for whatever area they may be involved in. So they may be in different uh, circumstances or different um, uh, seasons of life. Maybe the children uh, are going through, uh, um, you know, certain seasons of life, maybe as, as they're growing or their spouse is, uh, as part of their work is, you know, they're, they, they're in a very special circumstance. You can pray specifically for any kind of adverse circumstances that they may be going through, that God would give them the wisdom and the strength and, uh, and the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome things that, uh, uh, that they may be going through. So you're standing in the gap on their behalf, depending on whatever situations that they may be uh, in. Uh, we, are, we, we also pray that they would st stay uh, strong in the faith because there could be seasons in their life where faith may be weak. Um, it, it could be children, it could be uh, the adults, they, uh, they tend to go astray. We continue to pray that their relationship with God is restored, that they will continue, they will renew their relationship with God, they will be zealous for God, they will go back to um, uh, maybe a, a time of prayer, maybe a time of seeking God, rather than uh, um, rather than um, you know shunning away from from what God desires of them. So th that's something we could pray for. We could also pray for uh, um, for the protection of God over over the lives over over their lives or you know whatever they're doing as they're going in, they're coming out. We also want to would like to pray for. Um, that that the enemy, uh, whatever the enemy is throwing at them, that they have the power of God, that they have the armor of God ready, and they will be able to stand against it. Or we pray against every scheme of the enemy, that uh, that none of his schemes will um, will prosper, and and it will be hindered. So just standing in the in 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 the midst, standing in the gap, actually becomes um, becomes a wonderful thing because you're you're actually praying on behalf of them. You're interceding for your family, and that's a very powerful thing. Now, what we're going to be looking at is uh, I know this there are this is an excellent, beautiful chapter because it gives you scripture that you can pray for, um, uh, pray pray along with for your members of your family. So uh, some of this may be overlapping and we'll probably just look at a few scripture and um, uh, move forward. So uh, who all do we pray for? Yes, we pray for our spouse, we pray for our children, we pray that uh, uh, especially for those 
those family members who have not received the Lord. We pray for their salvation, we pray for their deliverance, and we also pray for promises of God over our homes, over our families. So when you're looking at praying for your spouse, here are some of the things that you can you can pray for. Now, in if you look at it in the book, it is, uh, uh, it's presented as though a husband is praying over uh, his wife, but it can also be done the other way, all right? So um, this is just not for husbands, but even for husbands and for wife. So the first thing that uh, we look into and the most important thing, because we know that, you know, if that's sorted, uh, a lot of the other things are in, uh, are in God's hands. One is praying for their spiritual growth, for your spouse's spiritual growth. And if you look at, there are a couple of verses that's given. It's Ephesians um, chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 3, and Colossians chapter 1. Um, it's always beautiful to speak, to pray the word of God over the lives of, of people because the word of God is true, it's active, it's like a double-edged sword. What you're praying um, is in accordance to the will of God. So praying scripture is an extremely powerful thing. So for example, when you're praying in Ephesians, uh, praying for your spouse, in uh, taking the verses of Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to 21, I'm, I'm just picking it up from, from scripture, what would you pray for? You would pray that, uh, uh, that God would give them a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that they would have a knowledge of God. Uh, you pray that the eyes of their understanding will be opened and that they that uh, your spouse will see the hope that God has called them for. You will pray that uh, they will know the working of the mighty power of God. So, so just taking that scripture and just praying over them. Uh, the next is, uh, let's look at uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. You can pray that uh, your spouse will be strengthened with power in their inner man by the Spirit of God. Uh, you can pray that Christ will dwell in their hearts through faith. You pray uh, that uh, they will be able to understand and comprehend the depth of God's love for them. You could pray that uh, they will be filled uh, with the fullness of God. So this, just, just taking some of these scriptures and just speaking it becomes extremely powerful. If you're looking at Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 to 11, 11, you, you pray that uh, your spouse will be filled with the knowledge of, of God's will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Uh, you can pray that they will walk worthy of God uh, and be able to fully please him. Uh, you can pray that they will be fruitful in every good and uh, good work. They will increase in the knowledge of God and will be strengthened by his power and his might. So just picking up scripture, maybe taking one scripture and just declaring that over their lives becomes a very, very powerful thing. So you're praying for their spiritual, for, for your spouse's spiritual growth. Uh, the next thing that we can look as we are interceding is praying for the purposes of God in the life of your of your spouse that they would uh, know their calling, they would know know uh, what their gifting is, and they will grow in those graces. They will be anointed in all that God has blessed them with, <clears throat> and they will um, they will continue to fulfill and walk in everything that God has put into their lives and, and has already willed in their lives. So you're calling forth the purposes of God to be established in the life of your spouse. Uh, the next thing you can pray for is really declaring God's word over your spouse. And there are a couple of scriptures that's taken here as examples, but you can take any scripture and declare God's word over your spouse. Like, uh, for example, some of the examples given here is in uh, Proverbs chapter 14, 1, declaring that uh, uh, that the wife is a wise woman who will build uh, the home, or that she is a prudent woman, she's a, she's a, she is the home's pride and joy. All this is coming from scripture, that she is like a fruitful wine in the home, bringing blessing, joy, and protection to the family. So. You know, taking scripture and just praying over whatever uh, you may see as the circumstance uh, for your spouse. So whatever scripture it is, um, you know, taking that, it, it just doesn't mean that, you know, you need to fit into whatever is written here. These are just examples that's given. The last thing that you pray for um, as you 
as you look uh, as you pray for your spouse is over their work over whatever they are doing whether they are in a in a in a workplace or whether they are in ministry or whether they're just homemakers uh, that god would give them uh, would give them wisdom that he would bless uh, all the work of their hands that they would walk in god's wisdom in everything that they do that uh, the will of god will be established in the decisions that they make that uh, everything that they put their hands to will be blessed and they will prosper in all that they do so these this is just a couple of things that are much more many more things that you can continue to pray for um, when we're looking at praying for for your children it's on the similar lines but you can add in a couple more of uh, more of things because they are in the phase of growth and really finding their um, sorry finding their life's calling give me a minute please Okay, so um, uh, what what we're again? Yeah, well, so, sorry. Uh, okay, so when when we're looking at uh, praying over uh, the children, but we can also we can continue praying for the same thing uh, that that we started off with, uh, you know, by praying for the spouse. That is praying for their spiritual growth, uh, praying for their spiritual growth, praying for their purposes, for God's purposes over their lives, praying for their gifting, their calling, their anointing, all of that. The similar things that we prayed for initially uh, in the in the first uh, for for the spouse, where we pray for uh, them growing in in their spiritual walk with God. And also for the purposes of life, you can use the same verses that you are uh, uh, that you've prayed for initially. So we will we will uh, you know you could just go through those those same verses. The third thing we can pray for is um, that uh, that God would bring them to their places of uh, uh, destiny, and that God would reveal to them where that they where are the places they need to go what are the purposes that they need to fulfill so whether they be young children or whether they where they may be older children to stand uh, in the gap and uh, uh, praying that your children will be able to see see the heart of god to seek god for whatever god has destined for them whatever the calling of god is over their lives so so a, a time where you're just praying that they will find that, that God would um, release them into the destiny, into the life that they, they, they need to attend to. Okay. The next one is uh, to um, uh, consecrate and bless. I'm sorry. My apologies. Okay. So to uh, the next thing that you would do is to consecrate and bless all their gifts, their skills, their capacities, uh, all of it that God has blessed them with. To um, that that God would use each of their um, uh, giftings, their graces, uh, for the for the glory and the purposes of God. So whatever they may be involved in, and and this prayer you can you can make very specific for your children, depending. And, and I'm sure uh, you know as as parents you would have observed some of the graces and the gifting that they are. Maybe uh, some of the uh, you know one one of the children are um, let's say are skilled in a, in a specific. Uh, grace maybe like music for example or they are skilled with their hands they they work very well with their hands or uh, they probably have uh, excellent uh, interpersonal uh, skills so you have you you as a parent uh, are observant about what what is it that they have what is it that god's gifted them with and pray in accordance to that that god would release these these uh, uh, these giftings and um, 
uh, and they would be able to fulfill whatever God has planned for them. So that's something that you could uh, pray for. Uh, the next you could pray for is to uh, pray for whatever they may be going through in their current lives, in whatever season of lives they are. And maybe they're little children, they're teens, they're older adults who've left the home, but but just praying for where they are currently in their lives uh, um, um, stages. So you pray for their spiritual life, you pray for their uh, their love for the word of God, that they will grow in, in character of God, pray for their safety, their physical safety, pray for their health. Uh, you can pray for their uh, academics or their workplace, wherever they may be, uh, their, their uh, spaces of learning, where they're, where they're gaining knowledge, praying for that, praying for the choices that they make, the choices of friends, the, the decisions that they make, that whatever they do, they will be guided with that wisdom and that discernment. Also pray that they will be built up in, in character and, um, and the word of God, that their lifestyles will be godly, that they will uh, not move into a space of compromise, all right? So, so that's how you pray for their present. You also pray for their future. And now this, even if they are little children, even if they're tiny um, um, babies, praying for this uh, is is always is always a good thing. You're 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 praying for their future, maybe way ahead um, into their future, but you're praying for their their uh, maybe their schooling and the kind of profession that they will take um, the their journey through all of that and how they reach their purposes you pray for uh, that god would open doors that there will be opportunities will be will come over their lives and god would provide seasons and uh, situations in their life for for their growth pray that they will be uh, impactful they will be influential they will be fruitful in all that they do Pray for their future families. Maybe it is their spouse, their own family members, their children. Uh, praying for uh, for the way that they may they may minister the church that they will will be going to. How they are going to serve God? Praying for all of that is it comes under that. the The last thing that we can look at is to uh, pray that uh, uh, all of the weapons, the schemes of the enemy. Uh, is broken in their lives. It will be bound, it will be destroyed, it will be annulled. That, and you pray over them that any scheme of the enemy for their destruction will be bound, will be destroyed, and only the purposes and the uh, and the way of God would be over their lives. So that's, that's a part of praying for the children. Uh, the next, uh, are there any questions as of now? Anyone having any questions before we move on? Okay, all right. So the next part, part is to pray for their salvation and deliverance. Uh, now, this is especially if, uh, in case your any member of your family is not yet saved, um, and they have not yet uh, uh, built a relationship with God. These these are some things that you can pray for and uh, and and seek the Lord for their salvation. Um, Again, while we are doing this, um, we are we need to we we need to be careful not to uh, not to force people to come to a, a decision. It is something that they need to come to themselves. So it is it is giving them the time and as well being very very patient through the process. So we're not praying. We're not being uh, taking the. Uh, the reins from the Holy Spirit over here, but we are trying. We are all that we are doing is standing in the in the gap. So, but instead, what do we do? We are there praying and also showing the love of God to them. So, so it is. It's important to keep engaging in in faithful, fervent prayer, no matter however long it takes. So, uh, the, it you may see. Uh, through situations in the in the life of maybe it's your spouse or your or your children that uh, there may be a lot of disinterest there could be um, there could be rebellion um, nevertheless we continue strong in prayer not giving up uh, in prayer but to ensure that that we we continue to contend in faith for for them 
Okay, so what are some of the things that we can pray for? Now, these are all uh, in line with scriptures. Uh, in scripture and you would we will see the scripture uh, reference that's given there so what do we pray for so the first thing is to cast down every spirit of deception uh, uh, atheism existentialism humanism false religion that has crowded their minds anything that has taken a place of what the gospel should we we bind that in jesus name and we are declaring that the gospel will come forth into their lives and uh, the, the knowledge of God and the knowledge of Jesus Christ will, will be supreme. That's what we declare and we pray for. Uh, the second thing we can pray for in accordance to 2 Corinthians uh, 10 verse 5 is to bring down every stronghold or every imagination or argument that stands in the way of the truth of the word of God and keeping every thought captive and obedient to that of Christ. So you're praying that no matter what they are saying, no matter how they may be responding, uh, you're doing this through through uh, interceding uh, intercessory prayer, where you are casting down every thought. Maybe it's something about uh, you know they probably are uh, are talking about how they don't see God or they or they don't believe this God. So you're you're in your time of prayer. That's what you're doing in faith, casting down every uh, every wrong thought or every strong. Um, argument that's coming against uh, or what is against the word of God, you are casting that out and you're taking those thoughts captive uh, to Christ. The third thing is to uh, to pray that the Holy Spirit, who is the convictor of sin, that God, that the Holy Spirit will convict them of sin, of righteousness and judgment, that he would do the work. He would uh, encounter and bring about a conviction of their of, of sin. Uh, the next is to ask the Lord to draw them to him, that they would have encounters of God, that uh, they would seek God in, in truth and uh, in spirit. Next is um, uh, to pray that God will move, will move upon them, bringing them to a place of repentance and to the place of knowing what the truth, the truth is, that they will not be blinded uh, in their senses, but they will they will have the knowledge of God. The last thing is that uh, you are also praying that the Holy Spirit will um, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit will reveal and will will bring about wisdom to them that their spiritual eyes will be enlightened. These are verses that we spoke about initially in Ephesians and Colossians, uh, and that they would know God's word. And they will grow in the purposes of His calling, and they will. Um, they will be filled with the knowledge of God, filled with the fullness of God. Okay, so these are some of the um, uh, verses that you can pray for, especially for those who may be uh, who may who may not be in a place of salvation. All right. That uh, if you look through the um, you know the rest of the chapter, there are a lot of promises and a scripture that you can pray over your home, and and maybe I'll just take some time to have. Uh, some of you read this because they. Uh, I think even as we read it, uh, it's better than me explaining it. It is to just read it and as you're reading it, really being able to declare it uh, for your home. So if you are following through with the book, if not, if you just have your Bibles open, um, I'll call out a couple of verses. Uh, maybe some of you can just unmute and, and just take time to read it. Don't wait for somebody to read it. Just go ahead and read it. And as you're reading it, Make that a prayer uh, for your families as well. Okay, so let's go. Uh, Psalm 118, verse 15. The vo voice of rejoicing and salvation is, the, is in the tents of the righteousness. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. Thank you. Psalm 128, verses 1 to 6. Happy are those who obey the Lord, who live by his commands, your work will provide for your needs. You will be happy and prosperous. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine in your house, and your children will be like young olive trees around your table. A man who obeys the Lord will surely be blessed like this. May the Lord bless you from Zion. 
may you see jerusalem prosper all the days of your life may you live to see your grandchildren peace be with israel thank Amen. you man okay if you look at the next four verses it's so beautiful it just say you know and this is something that you can say at any point of time lord bless my home because it's the home of the just bless my house that because the house of the righteous will stand i believe that the tent of the upright will flourish the house of the righteous there is much treasure so you know just speaking this is so powerful okay next we we'll go through the next one isaiah chapter 32 verses 18 and 19 my people will dwell in a peaceful habitation in secure dwellings and in quiet resting places though hail comes down on the forest and the city is brought low in humiliation amen mm. amen so uh, think of think of a time when maybe there is a lot of strife happening in the house what is scripture saying that you will dwell in a peaceful habitation in secure dwellings and in quiet resting places so even when a home is filled with strife or when there are challenging uh, conversations that's happening and there are maybe issues that are brewing no matter what stage of life it is just speaking this god's word that that god says god has promised that his people will dwell in a habitation that is peaceful it's going to be secure and it is going to be quiet the places it's going to be places of rest okay so speaking that is extremely powerful um maybe in a call over here i'm sure there are quite a few people here who are parents and um, if you've never done this this far uh, you know on a regular basis if not every day to be able to speak some of these scriptures over your children so whatever season of life that they may be in right they may be still young toddlers but to really pray over them uh, is a, is a very active and uh, powerful and not only that it is a you're actually praying from a place of faith okay uh, so so to doing that is you're you're actually declaring what god's word uh, wants to see over their lives and what he will he will accomplish so let's read a few of this um, let's let's skip the first one psalm 112 verses 1 to 3 can someone read that Praise the Lord happy is the person who honors the Lord who takes pleasure in obeying his commands the good man's children will be powerful in the land his descendants will be blessed his family will be wealthy and rich and he will be prosperous forever amen amen so here it says uh, the children will be powerful in the land and your uh, descendants will be blessed okay so that's that's extremely powerful uh let's look at isaiah chapter 44 verses 3 and 4 for i will pour water on him who is thirsty and flood on the dry ground i will pour my spirit on your descendants and my blessings on your offspring they will spring up among the grass like willows by the water courses thank you Amen. thank you deepu so what does it say here that the spirit of god will be upon your descendants his blessing on the offspring so much so that they will spring up among the grass like willows by the water courses which means they're going to be going to be a lot more prosperous and a lot more uh, strong uh, they will spring up uh, uh, above all above everything else All right let's look at Isaiah 59:21 As for me says the Lord this is my covenant with them my spirit who is upon you and my words which i have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth nor from the mouth of your descendants nor from the mouth of your descendants descendants says the Lord this from this time and forever more amen oh amen so this is what it says the word of god the word of god will not depart from our descendants so you may be in a season where 
your children probably do not know the Lord yet, or they have tasted, but have stepped aside and uh, to to just to just speak this that the, the the word of God will not depart from the mouth of your descendants. Uh, so I just want to actually um, maybe share something that uh, that that. Uh, something that that I used to pray for uh, for my for my children when they were when one of them was very young um, they they hated to go to school uh, you know and, and this I'm talking about is like preschool at three and four years and there used to be significant struggle every morning um, when they used to go to school uh, they used to be crying and you know fuss and uh, a general sense of anxiety, so much so that you know, just dropping them to school would be very, very hard. And uh, uh, you know, my mind was never rested you know, as they went because they went really disturbed and uh, came back even disturbed. So when they went, they would be disturbed. Even coming back, the very fact that they had to stay there for two, three hours seemed very disturbing for them. And that's when I, I started praying um, uh, the scripture in 1 Timothy 1, 7, God has not given them a spirit of fear or timidity, but of power of love and a sound mind. So I just used to declare that over, over them and say, you know, a sound mind is your portion, not uh, and, and not to the child. The child was just what, three, four years old. But in my regular prayer, as I was dropping them, bringing them back, just that thing of just them having a sound mind and, and a child who's anxious was anxious then today has seemed to be a lot more friendly and open and and conversational so um it it the 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 idea or the understanding is whatever your circumstance may be uh that that isn't that yeah that may be a natural reality but there is a spiritual reality that you know of, and that comes from God's word. So, so the more that you focus on the spiritual reality rather than the natural reality, you will see uh, things unfolding. You know, things just changing and working out um, uh, on on your behalf. And nothing more powerful or strong than actually speaking the word of God over them. Uh, as I was just recently sharing, um, I have parents who are uh, quite elderly. I have an 86-year-old father, an 83-year-old mother. And uh, uh, a lot of times in the recent past, especially over the last six months, uh, both of them have had falls, You know, just moving around in the house because of their age, their lack of balance have had significant falls in the bathroom, from the bed, hitting a wall. And there are so many things that could have happened. Uh, but something that I keep praying every day uh, is from Psalms 91, where I, where I pray that, uh, uh, that, that they will not strike their foot against a stone, you know, and that angels will, will uh, bring them up, will, will hold them up, lest they strike their foot against a stone. And, and so I, I just speak that. But then when I when I get calls from them saying that you know we just had a fall but we're okay and there's nothing gone wrong that's just uh, it's 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 a testimony of the fact that God's word is alive is active it will it will go forth and accomplish what it was sent forth for so whatever you may be going through in your own personal homes whether it be with your spouse whether it be with your children extended family members. Praying and interceding uh, for on behalf of them or for them, and praying scripture is the most powerful thing. It is you confess, you confess the word of God, confess the truth of God, and we can be sure that uh, you know God will watch over His word. Isaiah it says God watches over His word and performs it, not just watches, but He ensures that it will be performed. So uh, in faith, continue seeking God and praying for the different members of your family. All right. OK, I, we have another five minutes. If there is anyone who wants to maybe uh, say a testimony, anything, or if there are questions, any thoughts, uh, we can take a couple of minutes uh, to do that. Yeah. Um, please feel free to, to talk. This is not a monologue. 
I know when it becomes online, it becomes extremely monologue. But if there's anyone who'd like to share, uh, let's keep this open. Because you're building faith. You build the faith of somebody else as they're listening to you. So anyone. So I have a question. What about children, you know, who they think they know more than you and still doing the, I mean, going to the internet site to find the wrong faith and religious, uh, I mean, uh, ways, you know, and arguing with you regarding the belief of Jesus. I mean, hmm. how to handle the children? Now, my, my, I'm talking about my daughter. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. whenever I try to tell her about, you know, she's always defending other faiths and, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. So how do I begin with her? You know, I have this problem. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, as we said in script, as we were, uh, uh, you know, just learning today, prayer is one of the most powerful weapon, uh, Gertrude. So to, yeah. to take that time to really pray for her is one thing that we looked at. And please, please do that. And I think there are many things that you can follow. In addition, um, especially if they are children who are older, and if they are open, if they are willing to have a conversation, um, some of the time it, it would be helpful for us to engage in a conversation. Maybe the first thing that you could start doing is hearing her out. What is it that? she's searching what is it that she's found why does she believe in that it's uh, i'd say you know come with the position of being curious and inquisitive uh, rather than being in a place of judgment and correction okay especially okay. if you do find a lot of resistance you may need to change your approach a bit so that yeah. uh, she knows that you are willing you're, you're there to know and to understand and 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 hear her out rather than placing judgment on what she's chosen. All right. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think the more comfortable she gets, you get in talking about this, the more willingness I believe she will begin to show to, to even hear your faith, to hear where you are. And why is it that you believe what you believe? Right. So especially with children who are uh, uh, who are above, let's say, 13, 14, who have a mind of their own, who think of them uh, by themselves, who have the access to so much of uh, information around, uh, more than us imposing and putting our thoughts, our understanding, it is to engage openly and without any judgment, yet at the same time, in your heart and outside of that conversation, continuing to pray asking God to give you the wisdom to have a healthy conversation, a conversation that seems mutually respectful. All right. So all because you're hearing what she's saying, that doesn't mean, uh, you know, you're accepting it. Uh, remember that all because yeah. you're listening to somebody doesn't mean you're accepting it. You're just listening to understand. So maybe conversation could go, OK, I see that you see that. Would I would would you like to tell me, you know, what is it that you find in that? And then maybe saying, you know, I'd like to share um, what, what what I have found in, in what I believe. Would, would you be open to that? So initially, there may be a no. Initially, there may be something, a resistance. But keep that communication open. Sometimes, because of faith challenges, the communication in homes break down. And so uh, and, and then there is there is a lot of bitterness and anger or animosity that comes about. But that's what that's the key to just keep the communication open, even if they don't buy into what you believe in. Just keeping that communication and conversation open because it's it should all be by love, not as a result of, of anger. Yeah, or no, judgment. Sister, but they yeah. will if they have problem. They'll ask me to pray. Mm. But they will not pray themselves. Anytime, Mama, please pray for this. Mama, pray. I'm going. I mean, they believe that I, by my prayers, you know, things are happening. But I mm. want them to do it for themselves. You know, this is my. Uh, this. So mm. what you said is right, sister. I will try and uh, follow. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. All right. Thank you. OK. Anybody else? OK, if not, uh, we'll take a 10 minute break and we will be back by 11 o'clock. 
right. Thank you.